So, just arrived at Stoneley. It's a beautiful day, I have to say. Um, but uh, unfortunately, most of the time is going to be sent, spent inside, of course. So, uh, go inside and have a look around. Probably a lot of people still setting up as it's fairly early on the, uh, the Saturday. Um, but we'll go and have a look around and see what's going on. Quick wander around now, see what's going on. Not to film too much because obviously I'm mainly here to look for Militaria and things, but uh, we'll see what we can see. I think I was going to ask this chap in a little bit, he's got a GS shovel I'm interested in, so we might have a look at all again later on. Traders. So what's going on around here? Oh, people coming in. Just pause here a moment. Any modern stuff here, MPT and so on. So Stoneley's quite a big military show. There's two halls, and this is the bigger of the two halls we're going around now. Uh, various vehicle parts and things. Dealers, lots of arms dealers here, always are, every year. Around here. Let me go and have a quick look on that rail over there. So it's about one o'clock now on the Saturday and things have calmed down a little bit. Managed to pick up a few bits and pieces, so that's uh, always good. At least uh, managed to pick up something in the first couple of hours we've been here, which is good. Nothing startling, but. Uh, uh, have a look at the end of the video and the bits and pieces we've picked up. Uh, a lot of German stuff. Are you going to watch it? Seen anything interesting, Craig? Yeah. What have we got? Oh, yeah. Parker. 35 if it's. That's, well, see the contract number. Yeah. Where is the contract on these? The Looks a big the one. The label will right. be up in the top at the back of the neck, in, in theory. You can hang it sideways on so the. Uh, that's the smaller one, is it? Yeah. Smaller size. They're about the same, aren't they? You'd find the label generally inside the. Yeah, it'll be in, it's inside there. So 170, 100. So it's probably your height, but probably a bit broad on you. But then again, they are supposed to be worn over. Over everything else. So. So here we are, Stonely uh, Sunday morning, um, just opening up. Uh, go and have another look around, see if you find anything. We normally find most things on the on the Saturday, but we'll see uh, we'll see what turns up. Uh, as usual, report at the end of the video what uh, what we managed to turn up at the over the weekend. Beginning to get busier now, so it's probably it for filming uh, until we take a look at the bits and pieces we've picked up. But uh, not been a bad show, not been a bad show this year at all. And a few bits and pieces. Early helmet. And inside, it's a rather nice little thing. This is Alan's, of course, not mine, but nice to have a look at. Pacific Emergency Ration Tin with contents, which is rather nice. Got the uh, the instructions there. There we are. Very nice. As usual, unusual to find rations with all the food still in, but particularly it's uh, an unusual late war item. That. So another stonely done. We've got a few bits and pieces in the back of the car here, which we'll have a look at when we get uh, when we get home. So uh, yes, another stonely done. 2019 Stoneley over. 
So that was Stoney 2019. Uh, and as usual now, I'll run through the bits and pieces picked up at the weekend. Starting off with a very mundane item, uh, just a pair of putties uh, picked up. They were cheap enough. The pair I have that I've been wearing are quite nicely stamped up and are 70s dated, I think. So having a pair of these where the stamps have completely worn away for wearing is preferable. And as I say, they were cheap enough. Uh, another item picked up here. Um, this was bought from my friend Alan. 1937 pattern bayonet frog, Indian made bayonet frog. Just need, an need another one needed. Uh, wanted another one for the collection, uh, a spare to have. Another bayonet frog here, post-war 1937 pattern bayonet frog to go with my number nine uh, to allow me to hang my number nine bayonet on the wall uh, because I, I didn't have a, a post-war frog I do now. Another post-war item, 1952 dated uh, brown enamel mug. Again, I've not had one of these, needs a bit of a clean up, not had one of these previously. I've had a reproduction, just never seen one at the right price and I did at Stonely uh, this uh, weekend past, so pleased with that. Uh, wartime item here uh, is a 1939 dated. You can find the stamp inside. There it is. Don't know if you'll be able to read that, but I'll hold it up to the camera anyway. 1939 dated mess tin cover. So pleased with that. To one side, another wartime item is a. This was a freebie off uh, Matt Moore. Very kind. Thank you. Uh, of a quick release um, ammunition pouch, basic basic pouch. 1937 pattern, uh, Mark III, 1944, I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there. Uh, so it's a wartime quick release example, which is nice to have. Um, that to one side. An SLR magazine, uh, 1959 dated, I don't know if you'll be able to see there on the reflection with the, the uh, light reflecting off there. Pleased with that, just a nice pouch filler to have for doing demonstrations and things. Oh, like something gas rush is falling on me here. Uh, another item, another post-war item, 1970s uh, era beret, judging by the contract number there, and it's pre-metric sizing, but does have the NATO stock code underneath uh, with a Remy cap badge came with there. It's shrunk a little bit, it'll need some stretching, but it is what it is. Uh, another a, a small kit item, a bar of soap. This is French uh, Savon Hygienique Antiseptique, and it's uh, gold cream, uh, Savon Zip. As you can see there, I'll turn it around so you can see the other side. Just nice to have things like that. Whoops, a daisy, dropping that. Another hygiene item, uh, picked up a, a boxed new old stock uh, British made shaving brush, which I will get out of the packaging to show you. Uh, it's cork handle, which is quite nice. The story behind these from the seller was that he had several of them and apparently the, there was a big box of them found in the back of the stores in Malta of all places. It does make sense, but uh, to, to then end up back in the UK. Uh, so there we are. It's amazing what uh, does end up on the collector's market from that point of view. Uh, nice to have that in its original box. You don't really see things like that and then until a, a big case of them does turn up and they get distributed. So there we are. And one of the my one of the items I'm most pleased with from the weekend is a uh, para helmet. And you can see inside here it has the white uh, brow piece, white leather brow piece in there which indicates it's an earlier example, the, the chin strap's a 1990s example, but uh, the helmet itself is a, is a relatively early one, which is good. There's no label, unfortunately, that's all disappeared, but it is what it is. So very pleased with that. Um, it's a couple of uniform items, which I'll put on the mannequin to have a look at in just a moment. So just have a quick look at the two bigger bits I got at Stonely. One is, uh, this is from Alan, uh, my friend. Uh, the first is a, an army contract, a green foul weather jacket from the 70s, 80s period. Uh, late 70s, early 80s period. Uh, most of these you see are, are RAF contract. This is an army contract example. And this is the other item I bought off Alan, a uh, Norwegian army jumper um, or pullover, which uh, was very kind of him to look out for these bits for me. Obviously not purchased at the show itself, but it's a good place to also do exchanges like that. And I thought I'd include them in the video. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that interesting. Just a brief look at the show. It's a little bit difficult to do filming and stuff there, but I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and obviously the look through bits and pieces picked up. And if you were there yourselves, I hope you managed to find bits and pieces you were looking for. And uh, until next time, bye for now.